I know, I've done some of those before, but never a violin cover. Oh, the violin! So, 10 quick files tips, in random order, as fast as I can! And I will start with my favorite! All you need is a files plugin and an icon theme that supports multiple folders colors, and then you can do this! You can select a folder, and apply a different color so you can easily recognize it from the rest! Or, you can even select multiple folders at once, and do the same! And there is a single option to restore everything the way it was before! You can get add way to supplementary colors from GitHub, so you can keep the original GNOME icons, together with instructions how to install it! Totally wanna see this kind of functionality by default on GNOME files! We can easily integrate file cloud providers, like Google Drive! Open settings, go to online accounts, add your Google account that I have already, and then just enable the files API! Now, on files menu we get a new location that syncs with our Google Drive! And so, we can perform files operations directly from files app, like creating a new file! I'd prefer if GNOME files had that option inside its preferences, but anyway! Oh, and bonus? There are some patches for 336 release that add a shell indicator when there is background activity with online accounts! Seriously now, does anyone use Light Theme? Anyway, if you're using the list view, then you can go to Preferences, and check the Expand option. And since I'm here, you can also sort files and folders in natural order. Now, you get a tree-like navigation, although it is very bad and that is a global issue on GTK, really! You're on Blender and you're fixing your project settings and preferences. When you're done, just save the file inside templates directory, and give it a descriptive name. And now you can quickly create such templates directly from file manager, for any format you want. Unless it is DaVinci Resolve that saves on PostgreSQL. And if you have multiple templates of the same type, then you can create a folder, and drop all the files inside. And Files app will create a submenu for those. You want some controversy? Today's GNOME design would never ever accept such feature! You press F2 to rename a file. And when the popover is opening it will have only the file name selected. Press F2 again and it will select the extension to, and repeat to revert! A pretty good idea I must say! So you want to add asterisks passwords? No problem! Press Ctrl and L to open location bar, and type admin and colon. Assuming you are on wheel group, add your password. Now we have root privileges, and we can do whatever. But what we want to do here and now, is to go to etc folder and edit sudoers file, all from the GUI. Insert your password one more time, and now the text editor will open with root permissions. I wasn't going to refer it, but I will read annoying comments if I don't. So, we shouldn't open this file with a normal editor, because a typo can log us out. Instead we should use the VI sudo program that does some kind of validation, that nobody knows if it really works because nobody uses it, but whatever! Back on track, to get the asterisks we need to add the password feedback option. Save the file from the save button, and that is critical! Close the text editor, click on home to return on user mode, and open a terminal to test. And now let yourselves loose to enjoy the sweet sounds of nature and my keyboard! Ow! 
I suspect not many people are looking on shortcuts, so I thought to explicitly mention it. You can find some really cool things there, you may don't know, like inverting a selection. So assume you want to select Rika. All you have to do is to select everything else, and then press Shift, Ctrl and I. With Rika selected, you can now press space to open the Sushi Previewer. This is part of default Gnome Desktop, but some distributions don't automatically install it. And it is very handy, I use it all the time to preview sound effects. Perhaps the best trick of the video, very useful but quite hidden. Middle click on pictures folder to open it on a new tab. Then grab Luke Smith, spin him a bit, and then move him to home. And that's the keyword, move. Files app will always move the files when on the same disk partition, and so Luke will be gone from pictures folder. Ctrl and Z to revert, and I will grab him again and drag and drop him on home folder. Note the cursor has this move icon, but if we press ALT key, it will change to a question mark. If we release with ALT pressed, we will get this menu that allows to select if we want to move, copy or create a link. Plasma by default opens this menu in every drag and drop, and god, this is so so annoying. Anyway, so this time I'm going to copy Luke, and open the GIF of course, so you can watch the glorious moment Luke Smith places his glasses on their natural position. This is the animation we should send in space, in case we come in contact with aliens. So you know we can drag and drop an image from web browser, right? But did you know we could do the same with text, and for example, quickly save scripts from GitHub? Files will create a text file with the full script as a name, so we need to rename that. But if we open the file everything else is normal. And since I'm here, these scripts auto-generate dependencies for Flatpak build manifests. So if you do Flatpak publishing, and you should do Flatpak publishing, you really really should know those. Oh, this kind of DND is kinda useless, because the hot corner doesn't open for some reason, so we can only DND if Chrome and files are side by side, but I thought it was working before. Not very sure. Some things on this video like the online accounts before, are made for the people that aren't using GNOME, and so they can see how things work. This is another such tip. Public is a special folder for sharing our stuff in the network. Inside, we will find a button to open sharing settings. From there, we first need to enable sharing, and then explicitly enable file sharing, and that's pretty much all. Almost all, because I want to also show something to elementary users. So guys, this is called the responsive mode, that you will see approximately in? Never! I don't have something against elementary, quite the opposite, but to be honest there isn't even a comparison between the two systems. That's the greatest tip you can ever get! When you unplug a USB disk, always use the safe remove drive option. Not long time ago I copied around 8 series and I instantly unplugged the disk without unmount. I had to re-download everything. One of my biggest complaints in files is the non-existing GIT support. Especially in Linux people are dealing a lot with GIT folders, so it kinda makes sense for files app to treat those specially. There is this plugin. It isn't really good and I only installed it for doing this video, but if you are desperate for such functionality, there you go! At least files should have a badge or something on GIT folders, and this plugin can't do that either! So, that was my 10 quick tips and hence peak, that it wasn't neither quick or 10, but who cares? As a final comment on GNOME files, well, before the port in GTK4 don't expect anything major or awesome to happen. Which is pretty much the case for every GNOME app really. And now excuse me but I have to go and do a 70 hints and tricks video for Dolphin, for part 1.